morning, everyone. I'll give it a second for folks maybe to hop on today and do a little fun work with some ink and some masks this morning. As you can see, I've been very busy with them on my um, grid paper here. So I have had a lot of fun with the masks over the past few days. Really nice, fun to work with. Gives it a nice background. These masks, of course, will be retiring. Others will be coming, but the others that are coming don't have flowers. Good morning, Kelly. So I just wanted to tell you guys that. Um, <clears throat> if you are a demonstrator and you would like to see what products have completely sold out from the last chance list, you can go to your uh, login, go to your ordering uh, tab, and hi, Lynn, and go to inventory status report. Look to the right and you will see a little box. It's a little gray box like down here. Um, and it says discontinued. And if you click on that, that will give you an enormous list of everything that is already sold out. So my specials, hi Carol. My specials for this week, I've been doing just weekly specials. Good morning, Carrie. Uh, are uh, for $35, a $35 order, I will send you a pack of 25 sheets of retired DSP, and they're all different. Every single one of them is different. Good morning, Mary. Did you ever order your peach paper? Um, no, I did not, Carol. I have not. I had to order some other stuff. I ordered new stuff. Uh, so <laughs> so this, is, um, this is with a $35 order. It's 25 sheets, and um, they're all different. Of course, double-sided, all stamping up. If you go up to $50... I will add in a pack of rhinestones. And if you've noticed, um, this week I've been really working with the rhinestones and coloring them because you can make them any color uh, in the rainbow that you've got of markers, blends, what, whatever you've got. Then if you go up to $100, I'm gonna add in a pack, look at this, a whole pack of envelopes. Good morning, Jill. So if you place a $100 order, this is what you're going to receive. The paper, the envelopes, and the rhinestones. That's with a $100 order until the 15th of the month. Then the specials will change. And it's best for me to send out weekly specials because um, of the unorderable status thing. Uh, so I don't get into like a mess of waiting for product. I had to wait for polished dots for almost two months. I had a customer waiting for polished dots for almost two months. And I really, really felt bad about that. So, um, which I mean, we can't help, but you know, it does happen. So good morning. Hi, Sue. Hi, everyone. Sue, I'm excited about the golden ticket. So um, I have this new Facebook page for my, uh, exclusively for my paper pumpkin team. And um, I just uh, saw that um, this month coming up, you can register uh, until the 10th of, of May, but there's gonna be a golden ticket in some boxes. And uh, then you're going to get to choose $25 worth of product from Stampin' Up. So isn't that fun? Good morning, Donna. Um, so that sounds like fun with this month's coming up paper pumpkin. And um, so yeah, I'm really excited to get moving with all of this. Good morning, Joan. I'm getting one, I feel it. Yes, Sue, be positive, yes, I'm getting one. Yes, I would love to see one of my Paper Pumpkin people, my team. Um, uh, yes, I will repeat that, Kelly. Uh, in your Paper Pumpkin box that's coming up this month, hang on. Um, okay. So let me get, just get the flyer right here, okay? Uh, it's all about, uh, I don't know, they're changing things into bedazzling butterflies. I'm really into this. I have no idea what is going to go on with this. But in this box, and you have until the 10th of May to sign up, um, and it's $23.50 uh, for the kit, but there's going to be a golden ticket. So when the golden ticket is in the box, um, I, I believe, oh no, no, wait, 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 wait. I am, I am speaking ahead of myself. It's not this month. It's for signing up for the next month, okay? It's for signing up for the next month. Wouldn't it be a blast if everyone got a golden ticket? Right, Carol? Oh my goodness, I didn't even think about that. So I have misspoke, I misspoke. This one's already closed, okay? But it's for the next one, 
okay, the next paper pumpkin for next month. That's why you have until May 10th to sign up, but it's for the next one and there'll be a golden ticket. And I'm just excited about that because I'm just wondering how many they printed. I would love it if every one of Paper Pumpkin that they had got a golden ticket. Would that not be so much fun for everyone? Good morning, Judith. So um, I, I just really hope that either someone on my team or my Paper Pumpkin team um, gets at least one. I would be thrilled with that. So this week I've been working, oh, let me do some happy mail because it's Easter. Patty Weed sent me a beautiful Easter card and the eggs have Wink of Stella on them. They sparkle, isn't that gorgeous? Who would have ever thought of using the New Horizons with the bunny? But Miss Patty Weed, let me tell you, because she she really thinks outside the box. Oh, fun. It's like Willy Wonka. Yay, golden ticket. So cool. I know, right? Um, so, uh, Lynn, right? Isn't this so cool? Who would have thought of using? I, I would have never. But I absolutely love that the bunny is in the field. Well, is in the meadow. It's like it's in a meadow. It's like in a field. I love that. So pretty. And then Miss Lily Lily. Um, sent me a beautiful little card using the otters. Isn't that sweet? Thank you, Lily. So I just wanted to go through my happy mail a little bit there uh, because I won't be here on Sunday. It's Easter Sunday, so I'm going to take Sunday off um, <clears throat> and um, probably Easter egg hunt or whatever with grandchildren. I've been babysitting the little one now on Sunday, so I get everything, This, which is really pretty good for me because... Um, Way to use the paper, that paper pot. I know, right, Carol? Isn't that wonderful? Um, so, uh, yeah, which is really good because it pushes me to finish all of my work by Saturday night. And then Sunday, I just go and play with the grandchild, which is a lot of fun. So, because he's just two, uh, two. He's almost three, but he is, he's hilarious. Okay, so here is what I came up with with this mask. I did my background with these this beautiful um, flower, kind of like a daisy. There is hope for the kit, that kit yet, right? <laughs> Carol, I know, right? Um, and then here's what I did on the inside. And really, um, this week is to show you about how to use these masks. Um, I, I've watched a lot of videos and uh, I've really, uh, the techniques with these masks are amazing. So, and then this is what I did with the envelope, just made it really, really pretty. So I'm gonna use a blending brush, tuxedo, uh, memento black ink, Daffodil Delight and a little Magenta Madness. Remember, um, Magenta Madness, that whole set of colors is retiring, and I have no idea what's left with that, to tell you the truth. Okay, so we have a base open like this. I'm using a landscape um, one this time. I just needed a little bit more surface area, so I turned it. Um, then the inside is Mint Macaron at five by three and three quarter and basic white four and three quarter by three and a half. The outside pieces I've used is mint macaron, five and a quarter by four, and then basic white four and three quarter by three and a half. We're gonna run this through the embossing folder. It's that 3D um, paint. Hi, Anita, good morning. Hello. I turned the kit into masculine birth. Oh, that was a great idea, Carrie. Masculine birthday card she turned the kit into. My lives are better for um, the mask than, than stamping up. Oh, you're so sweet, Lynn. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the uh, I, re I really got a lot of inspiration from a lot of other videos. Uh, now, I also want to, we also need to make a hedgehog. So I'm using my little hedgehog punch. This is the greatest thing. When you use something like these masks, you can move in any set that you want. Like right here um, on Sunday, I did this card. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Hi, Sandra. Um, I did this card. I used a little vellum here, but I used the hello from Paper Pumpkin. I used the sentiment from Paper Pumpkin. This card came out so pretty. It, uh, that video is, is a little long because of, you know, what you have to do, uh, but that's what it takes to get this effect, and I thought it was quite pretty. Um, okay, so today we're going to use our little hedgehog. Now, I want to make his shell, okay, because, like, when you make his shell, it just looks plain if you just make it with paper. So I thought I'd just emboss it with this paint embossing folder. I'm going to punch this out real quick. Um, and uh, it really came out adorable, absolutely adorable. 
So let's go ahead and move the stamp cut and emboss machine in. We need the big one for this because we're going to emboss. Let me get my, all my little pieces out here. Okay. All right, now, make sure I get the right ones here for the embossing, okay? And this piece is that mint macaron five and a quarter by four. And here's my, this beautiful um, embossing folder. This will carry over. And you could do this either way with the Stampin' Up! logo on the front or the back, whichever, doesn't matter. And this one kind of, you really don't have to much line it up. So with this, you use plate one, or I'm sorry, whoop, 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 yep, plate one, take that off, didn't see it. Plate one and four, because right here it says, using with 3D embossing folder, okay? So it tells you one and four and your project in the middle. I had my plate in there from cutting, but you don't need that when you emboss. And I'm telling you what, guys, this thing glides through so easy. I, I'm just still, still to this day, I'm impressed with the way that glides. So here is what we get. This little, like, painted kind of, almost like a, uh, reminds me of a stucco wall. I'm gonna take the little shell here that we just punched out, and I'm gonna put them just right here, anywhere, just to, but I'm gonna make sure that I get some indentations. And I'm just gonna run this guy through here just to give him a little character on his shell. Just like this. Isn't that cool? Good morning, Peggy. That came out really, really cool. Just to have, the, oh, that's a better way to show it. Just to have that little crinkledness on his shell because he is a um, hedgehog. Okay, now let me move this out of the way. Okay, and let's go ahead, and this is from Stitch So Sweetly. They're going, that is going away also. Let's open our Magenta Madness. Take my pieces over here. Daffodil Delight. And Tuxedo Memento Black, okay? So right here, I wanna do my little sentiment from the Happy Hedgehogs. Finding a friend is the best discovery of all. In Magenta Madness. Oh, let me get my foam mat. Here we go. There we go. And right here. Wonderful. Now with this, I'm just going to put, um, just some, uh, hi Sandra, good morning. Just some dimensionals round. And I'm gonna use these little sides. It doesn't need like four whole ones. It's kind of excessive for that little piece. So I'm just gonna use these sides right here. Great way to use these guys, just little pieces, right? And then right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take those backs off because then this piece will be ready to go when we are done with the front of our card. I'll just put this aside. Watch me forget where I put it, right? <laughs> that does happen here a lot. All right, now, next, um, let's go ahead with the inside of the card. And this piece is uh, basic white, four and three quarter by three and a half. When I'm done, of course, I will um, post, I always post the measurements, I post a supply list, and I post anything that is going on in um, Stamping in the Valley, okay? Anything like specials that I'm doing. Oh, I did wanna tell you guys, um, this class is now closed, but the PDF is over on my store, okay? Over in my PDF store, there will be a link below when I'm done with this um, class today but um, the PDF is over there and you can purchase that for $5. If you need the video, you'll have to email me and then I'd send you a PayPal invoice for 10. Cause the video PDF is $15. It's so nice of you to be nice. I love that. Um, so that's the way that I break that up just to let you guys know. Let's get the little mushroom out. And I will put this down here in this corner with Tuxedo Memento Black Ink. And this is the ink you'll use if you do anything with your blends because it's like a, um, 
it's like it holds the ink in. I'm gonna color with some granny apple green. Let me put this over here, okay. Just some granny apple green here down in the grass. I'm using my little brush tip here because it's got a nice point. These are brand new. I'm so happy with these. I'm so happy with them, I like using them. I'm gonna use a little smoky slate, a little dark for the stem here on all the lines that Isn't It Wonderful Stampin' Up! provides, just like that. I'll show you how to shade. And now I'm gonna use the brush tip, and I'm just gonna go through here and color, and run right over that ink that you just put down, because what that does is blend. It reactivates it and blends it into the other ink, and it, that's what gives that mushroom stem that great look. Isn't that cool? Okay, <clears throat> now <clears throat> the top, um, I just took some dark daffodil delight, whoop, not the nib tip, <clears throat> with the brush tip, and I went over the entire top of the mushroom here. Just like that, which looks really cute in the Daffodil Delight, but I wanted my dots in Magenta Madness. So watch this. It'll just turn the color to Magenta Madness. I couldn't believe this. I wasn't sure what kind of a color I was going to get, but it really turned out well because I was like, how am I going to maneuver around all of these dots? And then I just tried it on a scrap piece, and it worked out quite well just to change the color right on top of this with that magenta madness. I guess it does that because it's darker, you know? Isn't that cute? All right, we'll put this onto our um, mint macaron, just like that. So today, hi Peggy. Whenever I get brain freeze on a card idea, you're so, oh, did you see what I, I do that all the time. I take the tip off, right? <laughs> Try to squeeze out the glue with the tip on. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I, I get inspiration from a lot of other demonstrators myself, you know, and sometimes like I just need um, like what I call a kickstart. It's like, just give me an idea of what to start with and then I can take it from there. You know, if I get like that block, like you're talking about, you know, cause that happens to all of us. And there's sometimes, you know, I have my, um, I'm gonna bring the card base in and mount this to the inside. Uh, there's a lot of times, you know, I schedule my creativity, okay? So I'm sorry, sometimes my brain on the schedule is not that creative, you know? So I do have to get inspiration, just like a jump start, you know? Um, and that really does help. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring in this piece of, well, uh, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and stamp our little guy here. Let's make our hedgehog. Okay, we're, we need um, Tuxedo Memento Black Ink. And I'm gonna use my crumb cake markers on this little guy right here. Isn't he cute? And he punches out, which is absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna just put him in here. Ooh, I might've cut that piece of paper a little bit small. I'll just get a sticky note for a handle here. And we'll put the little guy in here. And we're gonna punch him out. Now, the secret to this little guy is line his top quills up into the little scalloped areas. And you should get a perfect punch then. Right there. Good. Yeah, see, all his little quills went into the little scallops. That's cute, okay, wonderful. Perfect, perfect. Now what I wanna do here is color him with some blends. And I'm just gonna use a little dark right here. You're not gonna see the top here. And I'm gonna just get his little ears and some of this fur right down here and in his little feet a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the light one and I'm gonna go over everything here. His little feet, which are really stinking cute little feet. 
just like that and just go over that because see it will just reactivate the ink and shade it right in for you you don't have to worry about a lot of of anything here i'm not going to color up in there but i am going to bring this down just a little bit here and into his face try to leave the little white of his eye white if not we can always use the color lifter Oh, don't press too hard. Boy, that is something. I press, okay? And I've noticed that um, I've, I've, of course, you know, when I, I press, you bend the tip of this. So it's best to you try to use the tip the best you can. Let the ink flow into the tip. But I have to admit, I press. So, <laughs> so that's just it, right? Now we're going to put, remember the little shell we did? Now we're going to put his little shell on. Now you can put this down with Tombow or you could pop it up with dimensionals either way. I'm going to put it down with Tombow. It doesn't matter. So cute. Put his little shell. And it's so cute because it fits like right over his little ear. Really cute. Really adorable. I'm going to do re-inking today on a bunch of ink. My least fit, yes. Oh, Carrie, yes, the re-inking. Okay, I got the last time, so I'm going to put him aside too. Uh, we'll put some dimensionals on him right now. Um, the last time I did some re-inking, I got a, a disposable knife um, that, you know, on a flat edge, and I added the ink, and then I took the knife like it was a spatula, and kind of worked and patted the ink into it, I seem to get a better result with that. So just a little, just a little one of my tips. I don't know if that means anything. Yes, re-inking is one of my least favorite things to do. Okay, so I have a little bit of seal on here and see it's just gonna hold that down for me just a little bit. I'm gonna take my mask right here and I'm gonna put it right over this piece of paper. This is for the outside, and this is basic white, four and three quarter by three and a half. Two pieces of scotch tape is all we need, and I'm just going to tape this down to my paper. And see, this is why I, this is why I didn't change the paper, because I knew I was gonna get, you know, all kinds of ink all over. So into the Daffodil Delight with my blending brush. I don't tap off for this, and I just bring it in and color and like i i've said this all week um all week it's only tuesday um but from sunday and what i was doing yesterday in here um i just i know they call it masks okay layering masks but to me it's stenciling and i used to love to do this and it's really just fun for me These blending brushes are so smooth. I wonder if a palette knife would work for re-inking the ink pads too. Probably. Yeah, it might. I noticed, I don't have a palette knife, but I noticed that um, using the dispose, and then I just threw the knife away, you know? Um, yeah. Linda says, my least favorite things is putting the stickers on the rubber, on the red rubber stamps. Don't care what method I use. I never get it perfect. Oh, Linda, wow. I understand that. I did a video about how to put them on with uh, using a clear block that I found right now is the best, the best way that I can put it on. Watch how pretty this is going to look. If you look on my YouTube videos, um, there is one. Ah. Uh, that is just, it's so subtle and so pretty, just beautiful. So this is going to get mounted right here in just a second. First, we're going to stamp our tree. And I'm going to do that in um, whoop, Tuxedo Memento Black because we're going to do a little bit of coloring. I think I'll take the ink to the stamp at this point right over here. I love this little tree. I did a bunch of thank you cards with this tree. I colored and colored and colored for days, but it was fun. I like to color, so. Just like that. Perfect. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Okay, let's get back to our um, blends. We'll use a little Magenta Madness, and this time I'm gonna use that little bullet tip 
Oh, thank you, Carol. I appreciate that comment. She said she taught her daughter over Alexis uh, with one of my techniques. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to take the magenta madness, and every time, every place I see like a little bulb, a little bud right there, I'm going to color that with the magenta madness. Fast coloring, just no big deal. No shading at all, just color it in. And I think I have everyone there. Now I'm going to use um, the daffodil, or not daffodil delight, uh, <laughs> granny apple green to do the little leaves here. And as you see, I'm just coloring right on top of this mask, but it's leaving a beautiful background, really pretty. Right into all these little leaves. Make our pretty little tree. And we're also going to color some um, rhinestones. Remember, your rhinestones, your clear rhinestones can always be colored. Any color that you have. Um, ooh, I almost colored a flower green. Get carried away. Just like so. And just one more. And then, good. Now I want to go back to the magenta madness. And with the little nib tip, I want to color the inside of these flowers. Just the little round little part that's inside. And really, with the background, if you wanted to, you could keep those flowers just like that if you wanted to. Of course, I don't. So, I want to color them. I'm going to put my grass down here. Granny apple green. And then light crumb cake for my uh, trunk of the tree here. Just a little light. You could do dark if you wanted to, or you could keep it plain. The other card, I kept it plain, but this one I thought I would go ahead and just show you. You know, if you keep some stuff plain and then color some stuff in, it gives it a nice little effect right there. And some, is this dark? Yeah, I want the light daffodil light. And this little nib tip right here. Some people call it a bullet tip, a nib tip, the tighter tip, because the tighter tip is darker, but I didn't want it as dark as my little mushroom that uh, I did on the inside, which I did with the dark. So look how cute that this is defining these little flowers out here. And it also allows our background to stand out even more. Now here's where I colored the tree. And here on this card, I did not. Just a little something different. I think they're both fine. I, you know, it's just a little something different. We have to do the masks on the envelope. Ah, oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I missed a leaf. I bet you're screaming. You missed a leaf. When is she going to catch that? There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, place this on here, just like that. Oh, who said hello? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Karen. I love the hedgehog stamp. Oh, oh, thank you, Anita. Yes, thank you. I love this tree. I've used this tree a lot. I'll say that. I've used the tree a lot. Even just the tree alone, I've used that. I've used it a lot. Oh, let me put a little bit more in here because this is embossed. So here we go, right here. And I cut this piece down a little bit more because I wanted to see the um, embossed piece behind that. Now, on the card that I did, I put this down with um, Tombow. 
I, you know, it's so funny. You do. You do forget. Peggy was saying she likes going through her embossing folders. And it's very, that's very, very true. You forget the ones that you have. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's always good to go through and check out what you got, you know, in your stash. This time I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals. Just because I can. Just a little different, you yeah. know. Okay, let's move this aside, bring our base in, and put this right here. Now the card tomorrow, I'm going to use the butterfly. That's so cute. And now we're going to put our sentiment with, our, with, with the Stitch So Sweetly die right here, or any die that you can use. And I mean, it's pretty, right? But watch what happens when I add this little brown hedgehog it just really comes alive. Honest, what? There it is. And here we go. And he makes the card. So cute. Okay, now um, I don't have, I want to use Daffodil Delight um, rhinestones. So I'm going to take the dark Daffodil Delight. I'm going to color five rhinestones. Remember, these are free with a $50 order. So I'm go going to take my tip right here. And these rhinestones color any shade you want. There we go. And I just made Daffodil Delight rhinestones. I'm going to put a couple of these on the sentiment. One up here. And one here. And let's see. Let's put one out here by the tree. And let's put two underneath here just because we can. Wonderful. Just so pretty. Okay, let's go ahead to our envelope. And I've got my mask right here. I'm just going to put it right there up to the fold. I'm going to tape it down. And now I'm worried, okay, because I am heavy handed. So I just take some post-it notes. And let's make, whoop, let's make another has to come right up to it, okay? I just put it right up to it, just like that. And I mask that off so that I don't have some sort of a calamity on the other side of the envelope. Not that it would be that bad, okay? A little Daffodil Delight. And we can just color this in. So subtle, so pretty. Just up in here. I want a little bit more ink on my brush there. Oh, uh, what, what is going on here? I missed a comment. I love this. I have to give it a shot, alternative ideas, yes. Yes, that's wonderful. Yep, yep. What, what did you do? Take your kits apart and just see what all that you had, right? What you had left over. I have a box full of leftover um, paper pumpkin parts. Okay, let's see how I did. Oh, came out wonderful. Look how pretty. Isn't that pretty on an envelope? Now, and I know it's just the envelope, but hey, it's just the envelope. It's just some ink. It's just some love to make your little project. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is to have your tape up where your ink needs to go. That's for sure. Okay. We will tape that down. <clears throat> and again, I'm just going to take my little notes, my little post-it notes here. And like I said, I said this on the video, this take, oh, thank you, Lynn. This takes all of, you know, a few seconds to do. Not tedious, just got to move the paper around. But for someone like me who gets a little happy with the brush. 
I think so too, Carol. I think like when somebody gets an envelope from me, I think they're like, oh, you know, it's like, oh yes, it's one of her cards. You know, if you, if you do that on the outside of your envelope, people, when you send it to them, they're going to know, they're going to go, oh, these are one of her cards, you know. I like to have things look a little special, you know, and even though we like to use up our DSP, right? I still like to, I love to use my ink. I am supposed to get um, new product today. So if I do, whoo, if I do, um, between getting my grandson and a ball game and everything, I might do an unboxing video later. There we go. I want a little bit more up here. The other great thing about these things is that if they do move, you can just look and reposition it. It's, you can look right through here and just reposition. It's really no big deal. So here we go. And there's our beautiful envelope. So pretty. How much fun. A lot of ink, a little technique. Oh, look what I did. I got, I got, um, how did I get magenta madness on there? But I did. All right. Well, that's where the return address will go, right? Okay, here's our card for today. Our beautiful stenciling. I hope you're enjoying that. Let me show you the card for tomorrow. And I might, I don't know, on, on camera, I don't know. Well, here's part of it, okay? Look at how I did the butterfly. And remember, it's layering, okay? The fighting urge to open my SU box with new product because I want to spend an entire day playing in new products. I get it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is cute, right? Thank you so much, guys. This is adorable. Tomorrow, though, I'm going to show you how to put the rose or that flower inside the butterfly. Isn't that fun? I had 20 or some that had never been opened. Car wow. I bet you have a ton of product, Carrie. Thank you, Joan. But this is so much fun to put the, um, look how I put the flowers inside the butterfly. I love the butterfly. Yeah, I made a happy birthday card out of this one. So yes, that's what tomorrow is, is to put the flowers inside the butterfly. And then I did this one for my team. They will get a video on how to do that effect right there. So that is really cool. Those are the cards for this week. I'm so happy with them. Pretty colors, nice and springy, easy peasy to do, and um, just fun in the craft room. Put Pretty Woman on and, uh, you know, or, or Forrest Gump or um, Steel Magnolias. I don't know, some great movie that you already know what's going on. And then um, sit down and do some masking. Of course, I'm calling it stenciling. <coughs> I know, they are great stencils. I am really happy with them. I am really, really happy with them. Uh, the thing about they're going away and the ones that are coming do not have the flowers. They're very geometric, um, so they don't have the flowers that and um, butterfly that's in this one. So, the, But there are masks coming. So uh, I know now that um, they need to go on my list because I'm so happy my upline sent them to me. I would have never done this much with them. I never did even order them, ever. But now I know that they are definitely a like for me. And um, it's something that I like doing uh, to make my own background. Isn't that pretty? All right, guys. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m. on my Facebook channel. Please have a wonderful day. Always go to your happy space. Do some happy crafting. And um, I sure do appreciate everyone doing a little fun in the morning. How do you store and clean them? Uh, how do I store and clean what? Carol, there were a couple I didn't like, so, okay. These are on my current order. Yes, th these are great little masks. Um, let's see. See you tomorrow, Kelly. How, uh, the stencils. Oh, um, I take the stencil to the bathroom sink and run it under water, dry it off with a towel, and I just put them back into their little pouch that they came into in. And I just have a little cubby that I keep them in. Because they're very thin, you know, there's not much, um, my, my upline sent this to me with a ribbon and a note, so I saved it. So, so um, but yeah, that's the way I store them. I just run them underwater. You know, I see a lot of people like rubbing on them um, in a way because of maybe possibly the way they would pick up, not this one, uh, but 
another one. Let's see, even the butterfly, okay? Uh, where are they? Right here. Okay, so like if you rub, okay, I worry about these tips right here, you know, getting kind of curled up. So I just take them and first I fill up the sink with some water, I lay them in there, and then I swish them around a little bit and just run some water over them. And then I put them down on a towel and I blot them to keep them flat so that these wouldn't, you know, they would fit in any, and, oh yes, definitely. Oh yeah, and they fit into a cake. Look at Lynn, she's so smart, right? <laughs> they fit, of course, into a stamp case, duh, yeah. Yeah, I get, yes, I suppose if you wanted to, you know, get a case and um, put them in here, you could put a bunch of them in here and have a whole collection of stenciling going on, you know, in a case. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon, and um, I'm going to do some creativity today. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., on my Facebook page. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.